Hi, welcome to Quirky Queen's Journals. My name's Kirsten. So I am just um, making some very simple collages today. Just using um, mostly jelly prints and some painted papers. Um, all I'm using is, I'm actually starting a new book. It's 140 or 130 GSM paper. It's just a cheap A5 book from the works. So I'm attempting to leave some white space around the border, um, but I'm not very good at that. <laughs> I get a bit carried away and I think, oh, that's white. I need to cover it. Anyway, these collages are simple. They're just between two and five um, bits of paper. I didn't really overly choose any goal as in, am I prioritising composition, colour, shape, whatever. I probably thought mostly about the edges, actually. Um, I tried to give a mixture of the sharp and the torn er edges. Um, and that's probably is what I concentrated most on. Um, the idea is is just to create this book to have as inspiration for when I'm, you know, feeling a bit burnt out or a bit stuck. Um, so I looked up Pinterest and Canva for ideas on composition, but it was more about grid layouts for design so it, was, it wasn't really about collage compositions. It was more about how you would lay out a web page. So it wasn't overly helpful. So I'm hoping that by making these very simple collages, um, that it, it's just going to be good practice. It'll become more instinctive about where I am placing um, my papers. Also, all the elements of art, um, hopefully it'll just be practice with, you know, how to put them together to find balance. And I'm trying to use papers that are not completely plain. Um, although I will use some plainer papers, because these papers have patterns on them already, you know, I'm hoping that although I'm only using very few papers, the patterns that's on the paper adds a bit of complexity to it. I do have a tendency of trying to join marks together as my kind of decision making and where to put the collage piece. For example, the brown paper has a big brown paintbrush mark going diagonally and the yellow paper has a tall vertical brown rectangle on the top left hand side and I've joined the paintbrush mark and that rectangle together at a point to make it as if one piece of paper flows into the next piece of paper so that it's, it doesn't feel too random. But at the same time, I would like to know other people's decision making on collage. It's not something that you overly hear about. There isn't a kind of guide on how to do collage. Although if there is, please let me know. Um, I do lot. I obviously do watch lots of videos about it. I look at a lot of the kind of big museums websites because they give a lot of information, um, around how artwork is made, what the artist was thinking, etc. I'm looking at the first collage I made, so I looked at a grid layout, and I think what I've done is I've actually made it look like the yellow pieces in a frame and I just wish I had it off more to the right 
and lower down. And I think that would have been much more interesting. Sometimes you've got to stand back to see it. Anyway, I just go off my own, my own instincts now from this one on. That is... Do you know that I cleaned up the jelly plate with that? That was fluid paints on the jelly plate. This one does take a while to come together. Um, because it's such a patterned paper to begin with, and there's lots of colours on it, but it is quite dark overall, um, it definitely took a while. So I'd been watching a video of by Adele, now I'm going to say this wrong, Sipston. She is an abstract artist. Um, she does a lot of teaching as well. And so she was making an art journal up for the month for collaging in. And what she was doing, she was putting down one big piece of collage paper, like I've done there with that pattern sheet and the brown paper on the other page. And the idea is every day she would go and add to it. So I thought, you know, that sounds like really good practice. And that's why I started doing this and why I'm sort of almost covering the full page with one big sheet and then building out from there. Now, I'll probably change as I'm going along. Um, but I haven't, I don't think I've ever started with one big sheet before and I think it was easier to build upon because you weren't having to think about the shape of the picture overall and I thought less about the white space as well. Um, so it probably did simplify the process somewhat. Now, I like these two pattern sheets together because although they clash, I think that because the yellow one is really quite bright tones overall, but the blue one is darker tones overall, it does work because you've, you've got a bright and a dark, you know, value-wise, and that's where the difference is, even though... They're both quite busy patterns. You've also got flashes of blue in the yellow pattern. Um, you've more got flashes of the red in the blue pattern. Well, it's pinky red. I think having the flashes, this is my thought process. I'm not saying this is right. But the blue is the big piece and there's flashes of blue and the yellow piece, which is smaller. And I think that helps balance it. But because it is busy overall, I've made this decision to use a planar sheet. I don't know whether or not I consciously made that decision or it's just what felt right. Do you know, right, I watch Lydia Rink. She does. She only does collage. I do watch a lot of collage channels, but I really would like to know more about the decision making. Um, it does. It's very mindful because you know you're just in the zone. You're not. It's not overly taxing physically. It's all about you know what you're choosing, but. Is there kind of rules about it or is it just like when you're painting, you've just got to sort of think of all the elements of art and then sort of bring them together as balanced as you can. So even though you would think that it would be better to choose the smaller yellow piece with a red piece rather than orange, I chose orange because the red and yellow are the dominant colours in the top patterned piece. So together they make orange. 
but also orange is the complementary colour of blue. Do you know, I actually think that brown worked there. So does the white though. The white works as well. Oh, I took a long time deciding where to put those very small pieces. This is what I was talking about, the edges. So most of the papers do have a sharp edge and a torn edge plus like two, you know, some some sides have more torn edges than others. But I'm, I'm trying to think about where I'm putting the torn edges and the sharp edges down. So I think because this is a very busy pattern, I've got the sharp edges mirroring each other here. I think. Whereas if they were plain papers, I probably would make more of a feature of the edges by maybe opposing them to each other. Hopefully by the end of completing this 72 page book, I will have a better answer. And it's 72 pages, but it's 144 sides. <laughs> I like that one. That one worked out well. And I do like that actually the top patterned piece had more geometric shapes and the bottom big blue patterned piece had more kind of dreamy organic type shapes. So this is only two pieces I'm sure because the red and yellow at the top of the green is almost like another piece and I have slightly kept a corner on it to make a sort of L shape, but not a very tiny L shape. <laughs> um, but I just felt that actually it was quite striking just having the blue piece and the green piece with the yellow and red piece at the top. So I was talking about layout paper in a couple of videos recently and it's 50 GSM and it's it's the idea of it is for sketching and presenting documents. Now I was looking for a stronger tissue paper um, but that wasn't very expensive. So the layout paper is... What did I pay? I think I paid £9 for 80 A2 sheets, which when you're looking at A4 is 4 times 80, 320 sheets. So yeah, for £9, but so that's a gel plate print um, and it lifts off the jelly plate really well, but as collage paper, the thinness of it is wonderful but it's also sturdy to cut it because when I cut the tissue paper especially if I'm trying to tear it with a ruler it doesn't work but this paper does cut very well so this is another lovely patterned piece where I'm not even sure what I was doing I was just messing about in the jelly plate trying to create little patterns which is what I've done and I think that's making it easier to do the simple collages as well because it does feel like I am com making complete pictures because there's already so much interest in the pieces that I'm using. But it is trying to find that balance with the planar pieces as well, which is why I've kind of got the solid blue, nearly solid blue at the bottom. Oh, this one takes a while, but I really like how this one turns out. Actually, it was worth the effort. I think I'll put a little bit of music on for this collage 
and then come back for the next um, couple of collages that are left. So I really liked how that one turned out. Um, these ones are much quicker and this one is all about the text and I need to get more large text pieces because I think they add a solidness and a structure and a focal point that actually overall probably makes the collage a bit easier as well in my mind. This is a, I'd made a, a stencil of a face. I clearly re reached that stage in the collage paper drawer because I've had a couple of them come out. That is Opera Rose. It looks like a highlighter colour, but it's, actually, it's Opera Rose and it's fluorescent pink, but it's actually got a name. I think as well, but see when you're using your own papers, because obviously you've got a limited supply of paint colours, etc. So it is easier to match them up because that first page with the words on it actually had um, that opera rose colour was underneath it or on one part of it. So as you can see, this one's a dark solid colour. Um, it does have some texture on it and it's got very interesting torn edges. And one of the torn edges has actually got another piece of paper stuck to it with the same purple paint and stencil that's on this yellow and purple piece that I've just put on. And I really liked how that just tied it together. 
this just came together like so fast and I was very happy with it. I'm not sure this one really counts as a collage because this is that layout paper again and what I had been doing was jelly printing and so I was just practicing so some of the prints had overlapped each other so this is an area of overlapping of two jelly prints so it does have the look of being two pieces put together but they're very very similar because obviously they're the same sort of print and um, you'll see it you can see the join so when I put it down as well I thought oh do you know there's actually something nice about how that is so I was reluctant to overly cover it so I've put on the tiniest little piece <laughs> just so I can call it a collage there is little streaks of orange in this so that's why I end up putting on a little or orange piece much littler than that I think there's a curviness to the way that the paper's torn. That's the layout paper. And it's tearing is, it is more of a, how do I put it? It's less sharp, the, the tearing of it. It tears so easily. So um, when I say it tears easily, what I mean is it tears in a way that it stays in a line. So I put on a tiny, tiny little piece so I can call it a collage. <laughs> kind of wish I'd left it like that, actually. But I found a stalk, a plant stalk to stick it to. I think if I'd left it as that long horizontal that was skinny but very solid, it actually would have balanced out the two tall verticals at the bottom. We would have had those two small horizontals at the top that would have balanced it. So that is us. Here's a couple more collage pieces and I hope you enjoyed and thanks very much for watching and I hope to see you soon. Take care. Bye.